My name is Roger Lahasset, and I have the privilege of being on the Board of Directors of the Harrison County Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber's taking a very active role in Harrison County and going around and seeing what some special businesses and activities that are going around the county. And today we have a very special uh, event from WVU and a very special guest, Sherry Crowley. Welcome. Welcome. Hi, Roger. It's great to be Sherry, here. Sherry, you are the program director for West Virginia University's Travels Program. Is that correct? That is correct. Well, I'll tell you what, I know I like to travel and I don't know anybody that doesn't. And I, what we're going to do here, we're going to sit here today and talk a little bit about some of the past trips you've taken and, and certainly some of the more exciting, uh, even domestic and international trips that are coming your way. So to get this thing started, why don't we go ahead and uh, see if you can tell us a little bit about some of those exciting things you've already done. Well, um, let me give you a little background, Roger, because um, WBU decided... Uh, that they needed a niche to, f to fill with travel because there were so many West Virginia we started with teachers who had never been out of West Virginia so we originally developed a program that was originally geared toward teachers to give them um, academic credit that could go towards renewing their teacher licenses but also we wanted to give them an educational experience outside of the state of West Virginia so we designed some short um, convenient trips so it wouldn't interfere with the school year or anything and the plan was if you can't bring a class to the place you go to the place and bring the place to the classroom That's great. so that was the original um, plan when we started this back in um, early 2000 you're, you're um, it sounds like you're well on your way because I've heard a lot of people talk about your trips and, and even experiencing some of the, the events that happened on them and everything. It's, it just seems like they're so special, and I'm sure that you've got a couple of them that really stick in your mind. So can you tell us well, about it? Well, we try to keep them special. We're not a travel agency, so we're not in competition on that level. We usually take, if it's a domestic trip, we're going to take a bus or a train. Um, most um, common right now is, is bus, and we're going to go someplace that you can travel to within a reasonable amount of time because a lot of people really don't like bus travel for long trips. Um, we, we picked a couple, one of my favorite. Um, we took a group of people and we, we themed them. So this one was called um, the Mark Twain Tour. That was the most recent one we did this past um, summer. So we went to um, not only Hartford, Connecticut, where the Mark Twain house is, but also to Mystic, um, seaport in Connecticut. We visited, we had lunch with Mark Twain and we visited his house and he talked to us about his life and his history and his writing and um, you know people learn a lot of interesting things while having a good time. These trips are geared to be educational obviously but you also you can learn and have fun at the same time. We went to uh, Mystic Seaport and, for example, we had um, teachers who were able and, and other participants who were able to swim with the um, beluga whales. And it was kind of interesting because a lot of people in West Virginia didn't even know what a beluga whale is. And if you see a picture of one, a lot of people will mistake them for a porpoise because they have such a rounded head. One of the interesting things they learned there while they were actually able to swim with them was the fact when a beluga whale processes information, you can actually see their brain move. So it's, it's quite a, an amazing thing. And they also have um, some of the first belugas that were ever born in captivity. So they're a very unique whale that most people don't know a lot about. So we try to provide opportunities that the average person won't ever experience on their own. And certainly whether they're in education or whether they're someone who's just joining us for the pleasure of traveling because, because they're a lifelong learner. Um, hopefully we'll provide them with a lot of unique things that they wouldn't get on a on a typical kind of tour that you know with the emphasis on shopping or something like that. So it sounds like just about anybody can go on these trips but are there any restrictions? Um, well you you make a good point anybody can travel with us um, because we can we do offer it for credit graduate credit or undergraduate credit but we also offer it for non-credit so people who are traveling traveling with us can bring their spouse or significant others or even some of their older children. We do have a policy that they have to be at least 21 or older though so there, there, are, there is that one limitation. So this, this, this has to do with 
the kinds of places that adults can go that, that, that kids can't go. So basically when you go on the trips, uh, you do, you can get college credit and you also can get professional development, correct? Yes, that's correct. That's great. Um, how about the average age of your participants? Uh, is there, since you've been doing the trips, does it seem to be certain ages or are they really spread? The average age is really over a span. It's usually people from their late 20s, probably ad infinitum, right up until I think the oldest person we had was probably 75. And so um, you meet an eclectic group of people. So um, you'll, you'll meet firemen. We even have a county coroner who travels with us. We have, we have um, besides teachers, retired teachers, um, ministers, there's a whole range of people. Um, the fun part about it is that a lot of the people take the trips over and over again so that you kind of, you're not at all intimidated if you want to travel, let's say, by yourself because you hop on the bus and you know everybody. And if you don't know anybody when you hop on the bus, certainly by the time you get to the destination, you know everybody pretty well. It's kind of like traveling with a family. Well, it sounds like the itineraries are really great, but... How do you go about choosing the places that you're going? Because there's so many interesting places around the United States and Europe and everything. Uh, is it very difficult to just go out and pick a place? Or uh, I'm sure you take the time to go there and investigate and everything else, but tell us about that. Well, there's a couple ways we approach it. Number one, um, throughout most of our past, we've used bus travel. So bus travel limits you. Um, our domestic trips primarily are on the eastern um, seaboard coast. So we'll go north or south or as far west as maybe Chicago by bus. Usually a little bit more than that, you're either going to have to fly or, or take another mode of transportation. Um, so when we choose our trips, a lot of times it's for the venue of what we're doing. For example, one of our favorite trips was to the town of um, Manchester, Vermont. The town was so excited that we were coming um, that they hung banners across the town welcoming West Virginia. That one was the Norman Rockwell tour. Um, it was about the Four Freedoms at the time, and Norman Rockwell um, was very famous for painting the Four Freedom symbols that, that you often see in research. Um, we, we had some artists go on that one, I have to tell this story, and um, Norman Rockwell has one of his famous paintings called The Gossips. And the Gossips is a series of heads, talking heads, um, in, in a painting that were actually people in the town of Manchester, Vermont. So if you can imagine looking at something that looks like a chain of gossip, uh, that's exactly what it was. Well, the artists in our class um, reproduced that using the same exact poses, but with the heads of West Virginia people that were in our class. So. <laughs> When we went to visit the Norman Rockwell Museum, they presented them with our version of, this one was called the West Virginia Gossips, and they actually hung it in their museum while we were there, so I don't know if it's still there, but um, we had great fun with that because it was a very, very talented reproduction of, of Norman Rockwell's original work. Um, but in that town, for example, we also went to the British School of Falconry, and you would think, what does that have to do with education? Well, falconry um, is a really interesting um, art form in terms of how people once used falcons to actually hunt. Who knows about that? I mean, a lot of people don't. So we were actually able to go into this school, and for a day we were taught, um, we had fal these giant birds landing on our arms. Um, we were taught about how they hunt, how how they are kept, how they are kept in captivity, but they're really not a, um, a captive bird, so to speak. And it, it was really a, a fascinating trip, which ended with a, a great party with the whole town, where the town came and, and we had a live band in our honor and everyone brought a covered dish. So it was kind of like um, if West Virginia were gonna do a homecoming, it would be almost the same kind of thing. We, we loved that place and I would go back any time. So it was, it was wonderful. That's a good example of, of the, um, the kinds of things that we would be doing on a trip like that.